the meeting one. Okay, we are live. Hello, everybody. <laughs> We're Hello. live with Brenda and Michael, and they are the two authors that are going to help us start our own private tutoring business. So let's get started. Questions, questions, questions away. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh. I just, I just, do you have any questions? Because Michelle, you, you're doing s such a great job. And oh, I think you. what happened in May, we all knew was coming and you either were going to freak out or you were going to find solutions. And that was the inspiration behind my book. I knew what yeah. was coming up and I was in that boat seven years ago and there was nothing out there to help us. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think, you know, like I fell into private tutoring by accident, you know, like somebody had just messaged me and said, can you do this? And I was like, sure, I'll figure it out. You know, so I had gone through a lot of trial and error on my own trying to figure out how to private teach a student in China, how to get paid, what platforms to use, like, and I've gone through different steps. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to start sharing what I know with everybody you know, and I noticed myself posting the same things in groups over and over again to help people. And I was like, oh, I think I'll just create my own group <laughs> because I think that'll be really helpful to just put everything in one spot. And now our group is huge. We have so many people in it and it's awesome. And everybody helps each other out and shares a lot of really good information. And so that's what I love about our group is that I don't have to worry about answering every single question that no, pops up because they're all knowledgeable. People yeah. yeah, everybody jumps in and helps out. And it's so cool. And I love the fact that, you know, you have people that are new. I mean, I think I answered the question, how do I send a PDF? And you can't really approach it like, why don't they know that? Because everybody has a time when we're beginning. And yeah. if they ask the questions 100 times, let them ask 100 times. You don't have to keep searching because you know what? There's plenty of us out there. There's We're all professionals. We are all highly intelligent. We are all you know, we are the future. We are yeah. what school is becoming. And last year I worked with a group and they were just thrown into it and they were so lost mm -hmm. and you should have seen them and they band together and they helped each other out too, but they're not like us because we literally know how to run a virtual classroom because like, right. like my, my website, virtual learning, we rock. Yeah, support of community hard. as well. It's really key, you know, especially during pandemic and, and it's, you know, afterwards, is really creating that community. And like you like you both touched on, it's really about everyone has their own skill sets and their own abilities and really having that collaborative approach. And I, I had never seen that in the same way prior to pandemic, the community of tutors really coming together and helping each other and, and assisting each other in developing their own practices. And I think that's wonderful. Yeah, cool. it's so cool to watch everybody come together and everybody is bringing their own strengths to the table. Like somebody may not know how to do things with a PDF or whatever, but they may have some other really great strengths that are going to help out the group later on. And so I think it's just really cool to see everybody collaborate and help each other out because we're all in the same boat. We're just like, we don't know what to do. We want to help our students and we want to make sure we don't totally lose our jobs. And, you know, we want to just you know, be there for everyone. Yes. And I know that you guys are doing wonderful too. You're creating the curriculum. We're all trying to get Thank it out you. there. We're trying to get the, you organize that team to get out like a hundred and some odd lessons already. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting yeah. here trying to do it myself. And because I animate, it's taking forever. I yeah. animate everything and people, I feel like Walt Disney part of the time. And I'm just like, <laughs> you want to teach somebody, but it's in your head. You know, if it's in your head, yeah. it's so hard. And I recognize how hard they worked on cartoons now. Like yeah. how many animations, how many movements to get it to slide, to get it to go in. And I'm like, boy, those people that made Mickey Mouse, God bless them. So much work. Yeah. <laughs> At least we're digital now. We do copy oh, paste. Yeah, it's all, yeah, Brenda, your lessons aren't all hand drawn. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. It's You're not wild. like back in the time when they were sitting there piece by piece. But it, it, it's wonderful, and I welcome all the questions too. I've been in the I've been in the industry for twenty five years. I started wow. out in the classroom by accident. Um, I went with a business degree in a foreign country, and what else was open to us but teaching? And it was a natural fit. And I was like, why didn't I choose this one to begin with? <laughs> 
<laughs> totally. Yeah. No, for sure. And likewise, like any questions from the group, you know, be happy to answer uh, for myself. It's been uh, 15 years in education and um, I started out as a classroom teacher and I just saw the ratios going higher and higher and higher. And it's like 32 students on one, 35 on one. How can it's we help? Not practical. Students, exactly. It's how can we help students effectively learn and build confidence and do all these great things? To the best of our abilities and i felt a smaller group or a one-on-one -on -one was more effective and so started tutoring but i but i found i struggled with the business side i mean you're always a lifelong learner no matter what exactly you decided the business side doesn't matter but i felt i had a good grasp of the education you know the subject matter and the teaching side but the business side i just felt i was thrown into the abyss i didn't know what to do so that was the impetus for writing my own book and my own two books and saying these are strategies to help you launch and grow and scale your tutoring businesses. This is this business book is specific for tutors to help tutors to grow. So it's not such a mystery on how to do these different key steps to grow your business while at the same time doing what you love. Exactly. And it's about yeah. organization. That's all I did. I just threw everything together. Michelle, like you said, you, you did a group. I put it in a book. It's the yeah. same questions over and over and over. And this is like the inspiration behind the YouTube channel. Every time I make a video, it's a question that somebody posed me. I want to make sure that it's out there too for other people that have questions. Now it's just the point of trying to organize everything in the, the website because it's just grow, like grow, 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 grow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I think that's so great for both of you just to have all of this knowledge in a book, you know, because like, you know, I think a book serves a different purpose than a Facebook group, you know, and vice versa. And I think that's just so great to have something you can access and, you know, scroll through and just find your answers and tons of great information. And I did mine in a different way. I didn't look at other books. Mm -hmm. I changed it in the fact that I made it interactive. I incorporated the courses, I incorporated the videos, I incorporated the knowledge, the worksheets. And then at the end, I said, you know what, I want you to meet me at the end, because you know, those questions are still going to linger on. And I love the fact that I get to meet the people now that have purchased the book. And as they're coming in, they're coming in with more questions. And then they're like, oh, here we go. Take note. This could be book number two. This is like right? what we didn't cover. <laughs> And, you know, it says a half hour, but I've been meeting them for like almost an hour because they have wow. so many questions and you don't want to leave them hanging because oh, even totally. with all of that information, there's still mo so much more. And one thing about the curriculums, too, I think everybody's racing to get so many that it's just confusing them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally. You know, and platforms, too. I think we should have three platforms, three ways to get paid, because you always need backup, at least minimum three curriculums, because kids get bored. You want something a little bit different. You want to try to spin it out. And yeah. like, Michael's organizing everything for us for the business side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at the spending side. Ask my yeah. husband. Right. Same, same. <laughs> More yeah, goes out than awesome. comes in. <laughs> always. And uh, Michelle, how did how did you get the inspiration for for your not just the group, but I love the platform that you've created for the teachers. And I love that you're not oversaturating it. And I mentioned it this morning, too many people took all these people on and they're not able to connect. And I connected to a couple people through your through your platform. And I and chose... that makes me so happy. Yes. <laughs> and because it's not oversaturated, and mm -hmm. they could connect with me. And you know, I, it's my choice how I'm going to choose if I want to take them, how I'm going to take them. And mm -hmm. I, you know, and I just like that because I've been on the bit major marketplaces and you don't get mm -hmm. hints. Yeah. You're like sitting there like. Well, it's often with the major marketplaces, there's a coldness there. It's, 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 you know, you don't, you don't have that community and it sounds like Michelle, you, you fostered this real warmth and this sense of community and this heart centered, um, group and that really makes a difference people are more open to share to care to thrive to want to help each other and engage with the community versus if it's going into a greater marketplace where you're just one other face in the crowd one mm -hmm. other new crowd so it's a lot harder to get to connect with people and build that authentic connection if you're not connected in the first place right have you, exactly. seen, have you seen her have you seen her uh, website choose my teacher it's only 100 teachers. Yeah, it's choosemyteacher.com. And I've only allowed 100 teacher profiles. And 
it was hard for me to come up with that number because I was like, I looked at how many contacts I had and I was thinking about how many parents have been asking me for private teachers. And I was like, okay, I was like, let's start out with a hundred. That seems like a good number. And like, let's see how it goes. So a lot of teachers have made connections. Some teachers haven't. And it's so hard because I want everybody to make connections. And like, all I can do is just promote you, promote you. Like what I do on my website is I make it available. It's an easy spot to find all of these teachers. So, and it's accessible from China. So that's one thing I made sure before I got started is that you could access this website from China because it's no good if you can't. <laughs> so, yeah, so the parents can just go there and browse and just scan as many WeChat codes as they want and just find a good teacher. But then on the other side, I actually advertise on WeChat as well. So then I actually post the teacher profiles and pictures and stuff like in I have a group and then I have a lot of contacts. So I do both. I post in my moments for the contacts and then I post in this very specific group because in my group, it's very cool. Every day, parents are adding new parents to the group. And so every day it'll be like so-and-so added so-and-so. And then like I see all these new people coming and they're not necessarily my contact. Like we're not like WeChat friends, but they're in this big group. So I have some other places to advertise, which is cool. Also, That's you awesome. have advertised the States. I've seen this in your yes, group. Yes, this She's is aiming new. for the states. <laughs> and this is good because you have teachers that are uh, qualified as virtual educators that can really help in the states for tutoring as well. Um, also, we have, um, if you want to talk about next week, is something yes. exciting. Michael actually invited, he, this is Michael's brainchild. Yeah. He Michael. came up with a virtual book fair idea and I decide to gamify it. So cool. Yeah, we got some really in, fun interactive prizes and questions, and it's it's really for for tutors who are wanting to have have those questions answered in a fun way that's engaging for them, and they can still take something with them afterwards and feel empowered. It's spin the wheel! I, I had to do it. I had to use the word wall. I'm like, yes, spin the wheel. And so, so tell me more about the book fair. So what can we expect um, throughout the book fair? Is it free? Tell me yes, all the details of so course. we can share. Yeah, the book fair is, uh, is free for all members to come and, uh, and join. It's on Eventbrite. So the links are posted, I believe, already in your group, uh, Michelle. And uh, when, we, when we get there, there's going to be, um, we're going to have Q&A. We're going to have a bunch of questions related to, uh, you know, the administrative side of your tutoring business, doing your tutoring business, um, resources as well. And so we're going to help answer some of those key questions for members who really want to know these very all vital important questions to grow their businesses. And we're going to have um, a prize draw at the end and, um, and just more chance to, you know, answer questions they may have. The fun awesome. thing is, is there's three times. It's only going to take 30 minutes of your time. We're not going to take a lot of time. So uh, I put, it's like 30 minutes only. We could just do a small intro. Then we go into the wheel. It's about 20 questions. Then we close it out. So everybody can go on about their day. And then at the end of the day, we'll do a live prize draw. And the yeah. greatest thing is it's not just our prizes. We have great people that have sponsored exactly. prizes. Absolutely. Like Michelle. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so we want to be able to not only promote ourselves. this is about the we, and we yeah. want to be able to promote what services you've done and what great Absolutely. things that your group brings into the ESL uh, world and bring more people to your group as well, because this is not about just going there to sell our books. We're going there to give you guys knowledge. We're going there to help you. And we're going there to understand that there's a huge community and we're not alone. And exactly. in crises like these, that's probably to me the most important thing to know I'm not by myself. Because seven right. years ago in that boat by myself was the mm. lowest point of my life when I made $15 a week for a family to survive on. Oh, my gosh. And that was 250 applications every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. And just to be able to, to make it from there on up again. Yeah, so. that's incredible. Oh. Yeah. Hey, this is what they tell you. You either this, these are the times that will either make us or break us. <laughs> well, it's really a chance right. to, to swim together. And like you said, it's about, about sharing what other groups are doing and it just really just expanding our networks and our communities is really 
the big thing. Like Brenda said, it's not about, oh, here's a book. It's about let's let's build together as a team because people are struggling and some are, are thriving. Why can't we all try to thrive together? Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, there's enough students and <laughs> I mean, there's going to be more. And here's the thing, like right now, I know some, a lot of students are still trying to finish up these huge packages that they had purchased through the big platforms. And as soon as those run dry or as soon as they January, realize, I think, mm, yeah. So when those run dry and then they re or in the middle of it and they realize like, this is not working for me you know, then there's going to be more. So like from here on out, it's only going to go up. We're going to have more students. There's more availability, you know, so in some ways it's a little competitive, but overall it's not because like we're no. going to have, you know, like it's competitive in the way where it's like, I feel like it's competitive with yourself to like be the best teacher, you know, like, you know, you work hard so that they want to choose you as their teacher, you know, like, you know, work for yourself and for your student. I believe too, though, if you mingle within your own community and you stay friends and you take that competitive edge, I've gone through that since the beginning of teaching, since the beginning. And you do so much more, more for your students. I ended up in real estate, the same thing. You become friends and you co-mingle within the community. And you know what, Michelle, maybe you got an extra student and you don't want them. And you go, hey, instead of saying it to a public place first, you're going to approach your friends. I had to get rid of two students this weekend. Because mm -hmm. I really, I'm creating so much and I'm doing so much. I don't have downtime. And one was with me for seven years. And I wanted to make sure she would go with somebody that cared and loved her. And I felt so bad because her birthday was this week. And I oh. gave her away on the same time that she came to me years yeah. ago. And I made sure she was in good hands. I, I know the teacher that she went to. I know the teacher will take good care of her. Mm -hmm. I spoke to her parents. So I so in our community, that happens when we get too busy and we need to to move things out. You go right into people, you know, first. Yeah. And I had to do the exact same thing because like I've got all of these different projects going on and like I just couldn't balance, you know, like I was teaching. Still not balance. Yeah, it's hard. Like I teach at a university in China late in the evening. So I was teaching late in the evening with the university and then waking up super early for my private students. And then I was doing all these projects during the day and something had to give, you know, and I was like, I can't keep waking up so early to teach them. <laughs> And so I worked with the Choose My Teacher site and with other teacher friends that I know to find good teachers for my students. And I was able to communicate directly with the teacher, let them know where they left off in the lessons, like exactly what lesson we were on, you know, and fill them in on all of the information. It was really cool. Yeah. And I think like you both have just said, like it's about those relationships and those families are going to feel far more at ease that you didn't just throw them out to somebody anybody you know it's you have yeah. those established relationships and so it makes it a lot easier to make that transition you know because I've, I've been there too and it is very difficult because you want your students to get the best that yeah. you exactly give them because you care so much about them and the families too but it's so much easier when you're like okay i know this person and this is who they are it's what they can do for you versus sorry i can't work with you anymore <laughs> right. No, I'm just gonna leave you hanging. <laughs> yeah. You know, basically, yeah, and they they don't like that either, and they, they no. get they get upset by that. They're like, "What do you mean you were teaching?" But I called her. I spoke to the girl first. Then she said, "Can you talk to my mom?" I said, "Yes, but you speak English better than mom, so let's <laughs> talk to you first. And then I spoke to her mom, and it was it's heartbreaking at the same time because you have that relationship with the family for seven <sighs> years, oh. but she's in high school now, and you know, high school is a lot more pressure for her. And the only time she can mm. learn on the weekend and I'm just not there. And it was so cute because she wanted to take me to teach her kids and go to college with her one day. And I'm like, Oh, oh. that's so sweet. 70 okay. years old. I can see myself teaching her kids at 70, 80 years old. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I told mine, I'm like, send me pictures. Like we're on WeChat. Like I cannot dedicate time to teach you, but we can send pictures back and forth. Like, you know, tell me something exciting. Send me a video. Like we're not, this Definitely. isn't goodbye. This is just yeah. teacher Michelle has way too much going on. Like, but it's not like we're cutting the rope, you know, like we can still communicate. Absolutely. So yeah. my Facebook is full of all my students. I've already watched them get Aww. married. It's really sad. Wow. 
watching them getting so married sweet. and have kids <laughs> and they're all over the world. And I'm just like, I feel that's old. Oh, well, that's amazing. Yeah, I know. It, it's totally, um, you know, same thing. I was telling Brenda this earlier this week, like one of my, like I, I taught grade one in the classroom before um, starting into the tutoring sphere uh, full time. And my grade ones, they're all graduated high school off to, you know, living their adult lives. One of them's engaged now. I'm like, what wow. happened? No, <laughs> <laughs> you were six. What happened? You know, I know because we'll always <laughs> see them as six. I had them I at three and four wow. and I had somebody contact me in college one time. And I said to him, how do you remember me? You were a baby. You were the teacher that took off your shoes and sat with me. And oh. then he sent me a picture of an award or a sticker I had given him. And we don't realize how much these kids love us. And he said, you made mm -hmm. it through all those years in life. Cause every time I looked at that sticker that said, I can do it. You made oh. me believe. And I, I'm like, it touches you that you don't realize how many lives as a teacher that we touch and how many kids that will, they're going to be with us forever. And they're always going to look at you as teacher. And when yeah. everyone says, oh, that's not, I said, this is one of the best professions in the world because it, it really is because it does give back long after even the classes yeah. end. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's, and especially now in the social media age, you can kind of see that, you know, where, where they're going versus like before social media age, you may not, you know, you may never know. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah no, we'd never see them class. again unless we saw them as adults and go, who are you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. The one I ran into uh, taller than me now. I'm six feet. And he's <laughs> past me in height. I'm like, you were the shortest one in the class. <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> he ate a lot of green beans. A lot of green beans. He sprouted. Yeah. Yeah, sprouted. definitely. <laughs> oh, yeah. But it, it's it's yeah. amazing, and like uh, you're really your your group is very very active, and I love the input, and I love that when people have questions, you're right. Everyone's like, choo, 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 choo. they get, yeah. and it's not it's not mean, and this is what I like. Yeah. You foster really kind. You might have an occasional one out there, but we do. Every, we get, and we everybody get puts them in mind, <laughs> but the people will go right after them after and say that's not nice. <laughs> The mothers, you know, right, exactly. And that was really important to me with this group because I know some people came to me and told me like I was scared to post in the big like VIP kid education group because like I might say something and then people would just start coming at me with negative comments and like you know, and it's just like that's one thing I did not want in this group. Like I'm a very like calm, peaceful person and like. You know, like, let's if we're going to have a discussion and we're going to have conflict, like, let's make it productive. Like, let's exactly. not just like say negative stuff to each other and like, you're stupid. Like, let's not do that. Like that. We're all grown ups here. Like, yeah. let's just keep it a good, fun place to be where we can get information like and everybody feels comfortable posting their questions because I don't want anybody holding back a question because they're scared that they're going to get attacked from different people. You know, that's not cool. Yeah, I've even well, seen well, questions be kind at the end because they know that their question <laughs> may not appear really well. And they're just like, yeah. just be kind. And I don't. And that's. Well, it's about welcoming those different perspectives. And yeah, yeah I mean, if somebody's argumentative, I mean, that's not going to be the best way to approach it. But it's really about you, you know, you're fostering a community where those defenses are lowered. And it's really you feel comfortable sharing those different perspectives. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Because we have so much to learn from each other. And I just think, you know, like, okay, so for payment, payment has been a hot topic in the group. It always gets That's heated. Definitely. But I mean, I have learned so much. And I think a lot of people in the group have because like when I started private tutoring, I had no idea how much to charge. And I was like, well, I guess I'll kind of charge the same as I made with VIP Kid. And that's how I had been going until I got some outside influence from other people that are like, well, really, you should be charging a little bit more for your time and, you know, doing the lessons. But, you know, in the end, it's all up to you what you want to charge your students. And, you know, I think we can have these productive discussions about it. It's a hot topic, but, you know, we can talk about it and share because that's the only way we're going to learn from each other is just by sharing our experiences. And, you know, if somebody can make a little more money, that's great. You know, that's good for them. But if somebody doesn't feel comfortable charging that amount, 
that's great too. You know, like, let's just, yeah. you know, let's just share, share what we're doing, share our thoughts, and then you can take what you want and then you can leave the rest. I awesome. also, I don't believe as a parent, because I've been through it before and I understand what the parents are paying. I know, I know I could probably charge like a lot more, but I won't. And I, I think I'm getting fair. It's definitely more than what I made at, at the companies because yeah, you have to, and when they argue and you just explain to them, you know, it takes a little bit more time. It's my mm. prep. It's my, you know, do you know how many hours outside that we're actually putting the, into it just to get into the class? So, yeah. and you know, but you'll have those parents, but we had books and we had this and, we, and I'm like, that's a major company that has that backing. I am a teacher, yeah. <laughs> but you'll get right. more because it's customized for exactly. your child. Exactly. Yeah. If, if it's customized, it's a whole new set of value you're putting forth to a family. So it's really, and families are, if you feel confident in what you are producing and what benefits it's going to have for that child or for that and that for that family, then whatever you feel your worth is for that, putting that out there, a lot of families will feel comfortable with it. If you convey that in what you're yeah. comfortable with, most families will be okay with that. If you can really show what the value is that you're providing and really bring that experience to them. Yeah, definitely. And there's so much more we can do now, private teaching. We're not restricted. Like, you know, we can take our time with the lessons. We don't have to try to rush to finish through. Them? <laughs> you don't have to finish you it. Master, you master. <laughs> I've taken mastery learning and that's what it was about. You have to master before you move on or they forget. I've yeah. even taken zebra, zebra students and I've created something similar and I've started them at the beginning and they forgot the words that they had learned because we were racing through each lesson. Yeah. And that's going to get nowhere if we're racing through. Right. Yeah. It's so much more beneficial just to be able to take our time, review things. And plus we're not restricted like with supplementary materials, you know, like if we're watching or we're learning about the word cat, I can pull up a cute cat video to share, you know, or like your real cat, a real cat, right. which we couldn't do before. <laughs> this is my cat. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> I tell, I tell the kids like, this is like the funniest story. I asked my husband for a teddy bear because we can't have real animals. He doesn't like, like the animals. So mm -hmm. he came home with this and I tell all the kids, this is my Aww. teddy bear. And then I Aww. hold up the ears and they're like, teacher, that's a rabbit. I said, no, <laughs> according to my husband, this is a teddy bear and it's my favorite teddy bear in the world. <laughs> Oh, that's so cute. I love teaching children because I can play with toys and I've got games and I can't go well, buy a I toy think store. As well, doing the online learning as well um, has really shifted that focus into you can be in person is wonderful because there's that uh, opportunity to build rapport. Hug. It, you know, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But, in, but online, it's the tech piece can really create interactive engagement in a way that maybe you might not be able to otherwise, you know, so yeah. it's really exciting to do that and be able to have these wonderful games you can play that are still learning, but it's like, it's just, it opens a whole new door of creativity. And, and it prepares them for the future. Cause exactly. I, in a lot of our lessons, I'm letting them do the digital backgrounds. I'm letting them do the, the games. I'm letting them choose their pictures. I'm letting, <laughs> and it's all about them. And the next thing you know, on zoom, they come in and there's a background jumping in the back that they created <laughs> yes. and it has their name. And I have mine too. And then to show them, uh, I use, I do like uh, s snow globes. So they create it and then they write about it. It's not just a picture in a book. It's a picture they made. Now they can tell us about what they made and you get so much more out of them because it's something they did. Yeah. Absolutely. It, yeah. Yeah. It's so much fun. Like there's so much you can do with virtual learning and like, you know, it just opens up all these opportunities, you know, for something you could have never done 15, 20 years ago, you know, like communicate with children in China on a daily basis. Like that would just be like an unheard of idea, you know, and now we can do so much with our students and even with students in the U S now that, you know, online learning is becoming more popular or necessary, you know, in certain places. Yes. <clears throat> right. 
And, you know, we've got all these teachers now who have been doing this for years and we know how to make the classroom fun. We know how to like make it engaging and we're good that at what market we do. is all yours, Michelle. And I can tell you, we can get you in the Russian market too. I'm over Ooh. here in Europe and I've got friends in Russia that have already talked about wanting more teachers there. The one that I just let go has friends. Wow. And yeah. Yeah. I, I think, think the opportunity is, is but out the there problem is, is the pricing guys, the pricing. It's the <laughs> one thing you have to understand when you enter into a world market, mm -hmm. my prices are different for each country based on what their economy is like Bulgaria. This is economics. If I'm wor yeah. working to get a student in Bulgaria, I know that I can't charge $40 an hour because they only make $800 a month, mm -hmm. if that. So right. I have to be relevant to what they're doing. Mm, and I look yeah. at it as I look at it as community service, giving back to a community. They may not have the opportunity to give back. When COVID started, I took my kids from Chile, Latvia, uh, Russia, South Korea, Lebanon, and I put them all in a free class because I wanted them to feel they're not alone and they can connect oh, throughout the so world. Oh, so cool. Yeah. It was so great. And it was just a free talk class. And they were talking with each other. They were seeing different kids from different countries. And then the summer came and they disappeared. I was down to one child. And I was just oh. like, well, so much for the group class. Yeah. But it, like even as teachers, we can do stuff for the community and that could lead mm -hmm. to a marketing, you know, a marketing thing where you're going to actually get people that would want you privately to have. Right. Now we can't have those marketing opportunities to read in a library, which I would love to do, read in a public library. Mm -hmm. And then parents would know you're a teacher and have your business card. But now we can do them online as well. Exactly. Yeah, you can have all a plethora of online events to be able to build your- Build a teddy bear. Oh, build a, oh. <laughs> a, a rabbit, Brenda, a rabbit. That's a bear. <laughs> But yeah, so the creativity and if you work in teams, the way you bounce off each other, like I love marketing with Michael. It was so much fun. I'm just like bouncing. He's like, okay, wait, let's, let's, we're keeping notes. Okay. And we had like that, that mesh session and it just grew yeah. and grew and his ideas, my ideas bouncing back and forth. And Michael, how many people could we possibly reach by the end? Oh, but I guess today's 75,000. Wow. That's and amazing. And we've never done this before. We've no. never done this before. And here yeah. we are, two people putting our heads together going, how will we make a virtual book fair? How can we do this? And how many people do we know in our communities? And yeah. how can we make it better? How can we help them and impact? It, there's not a yeah. way that we're going to reach every single one of them, but at least we know we can get the word out there that there's people out there with a life preserver that can help. We're not, yeah. and he's out there to help. I'm out there to help. It's, yeah. we're, he he can teach me how to scale and hire tutors, but I really have too much going on. I just don't want to hire tutors. I just... And I just think this is so necessary because you've got some teachers who were just doing this like for fun, just teaching a couple of classes here and there, no big deal, maybe just a little extra spending money at Target, you know. And then you have other teachers who this is their full time job. Exactly. This is how they support their families. This is how they pay for their kids to do ballet class or um, this is how they pay the for extras. their kids to do baseball lessons, you know, and it's just like, you know, it's losing that money is a huge deal. And that's where like it just hurt my heart to see these teachers panicking, you know, and I was like, this isn't just a side hustle for a lot of people. This it's is not like for most of us everything. because it yeah. grew and grew and yeah. grew and people left the school systems to yeah. come here full time. And my husband said one thing to me, we got ghosted uh, by Zebra English. They didn't tell us. We all knew it was going to happen. Yeah. And we couldn't even say goodbye. <sighs> and I was very upset by that. I didn't have a lot of students. I only had 10. I wasn't because yeah. I, I knew a lot, a lot longer. I learned a long time ago to put your eggs in lots of baskets. And then mm -hmm. I started putting them in my own basket. I started taking them from the companies and putting them in my own. So yeah. I, I like my own basket much better. Yes. Yes. Then these, it happened. And my husband said, please do nothing this weekend. Take the time to mourn mm -hmm. and relax because when you're panicked, you won't come with anything clear. And after mm -hmm. that was when I started 
doing the workshops, getting the book, everything started coming to line because yeah. I had, and within a week, I already made more than I made with Zebra. Wow. And it was because he said, take those two days to organize yourself. And you have to, you have to mourn it. We had to mourn the yeah. loss of our children. We literally lost our babies. Even if they right. weren't physically our kids, they were our kids in our class. And anybody that's been a classroom teacher knows that we're like pseudo mom and dad. Oh gosh. I know. Just thinking about some of my babies is going to make me tear up. Like some of my little ones. And it's just like, you spend so much time with them. You're so much in, you're so invested and you spend this one-on-one -on -one individual time with them and you've watched them grow over years, you know, like, and they start out as little babies who can't even like say a letter of the alphabet. And now they're speaking to you in full sentences and reading. It's amazing to watch. And then all of a sudden they're just gone, you know, and like some of the platforms, you know, you weren't allowed to add them on WeChat. Like for me, like I always taught with VIP kid and I was allowed to like be like scan my WeChat code, which is only something I started doing about a year ago, um, started adding students. So some of my regular student, well, most of my regular students I added. And then towards the end, I started just adding every student, just like building up contacts, just like, I was like I'm not going to do it unless they ask. <laughs> and I didn't even have the chance. And they had so many smart things. Put the put the code behind you. Yeah. I mean, and people typically were like, just tell them. And a father was so cute. Right when they announced it, he came up like this. He said, like, <laughs> and I was like, it's on the phone. It's on the phone. And we did it right, right in the class. Yep. That's yeah. what we would do at the end of every class, like towards the end. Like I, you know, every day I would add like four or five new contacts. Because if it was a, even if it was a trial class, I've never seen you before, but here, add me and I'll answer your questions. And actually that was very effective because sometimes the parents would be confused or they wouldn't be able to get in touch with the learning partner or the salesperson and they would have questions for me and I would answer them and they'd end up signing up and buying a package because I was able to answer their question. So it was actually beneficial for the company as well. But now I made all these contacts but there were other companies out there who you couldn't do that. You weren't allowed to add them. And so whenever ours, ours, you're not supposed to talk to them at all. Just yeah. send a message through the company. Yeah. And so then when they disappeared, they really disappeared, you know, and that's just heartbreaking. Yeah. Can you imagine? And I watched a teacher. Uh, I remember a teacher said that it was her last class and she posted the video mm. and that child was in hysterics and oh crying my God. and it was tormenting just watching it Ugh. and to see that video out there. I was just like, Oh my God. And I was crying. I was like you, the little girl, yeah. she couldn't understand why is her teacher leaving? Yeah. Why does she have to leave? And the mother was trying to calm her down. Luckily she was able to connect with her after and teach her again. Oh, but good. to watch that video in the group, I was just like, <sighs> That's torture for the children. Do they even realize what they're doing to their own kids? Yeah. Because yeah. these scars will never be forgotten. These scars, what they did is they tore their children apart from people that they had connected and loved so yeah. much. Yeah. Right. Regardless of where we're from, it shouldn't make a difference. Right. And now, now I think they're going to have to open again because now all the money goes to the Americans. There's no <laughs> middleman. There is no middleman anymore. Right. Because the market didn't disappear, people still want to learn English from English speaking people. <laughs> and so they just went and got it another way. So I, I heard they yeah. might be opening again. Some Interesting. Of it. Yeah. Because they realized that that's not a very good economical move. Now, before your money was going to China and then a percentage was going to Canada, America, and Europe. Yeah. Now, guess what? It's not going to China, it's just leaving. Right. <laughs> so. Right. And like, you know, you can keep trying to add restrictions, 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 but people get creative. They find a way to do things that they really want to do that they think are important. And I think, you know, a lot of our students' families really value learning English. I mean, to invest what they would invest in these packages up front, like that was a priority for them. They found it very important to learn English and like, you know, so they're going to find a way <laughs> like it's not it's not going to just like the want and the need is not going to just disappear in a thin air. 
No, because it's a, they're very smart in business. And in order to do business, yes, Chinese is the largest language spoken, but the most widespread language is English. And for their mm -hmm. children to meet with people from other countries, even other Asian countries, they have to communicate in English to most of them because not all of the Asian countries speak Chinese. Not all their representatives coming over will speak Chinese because I work mm -hmm. with Korea too. And Korea does a lot of business with China. And they speak English most of the time together. They try the Chinese, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard. And for the little ones to grow up sounding like native English speakers, they you know, it's amazing, you know, and I think that'll make a difference, too. Like, I, I just see with my university students, I can tell who had taken lessons when they were little and like they know a lot, you know, and then I can see like the students who maybe didn't start learning English until they got older and older and older. And there's a huge difference there. And so like, it's so beneficial to teach our babies and start them out young and, you know, and like to not have these huge gaps where your teacher disappears, you know, it's important for the students. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a lot of these curriculums were speaking curriculums. So they, mm -hmm. these after school programs were after school programs. We were not get an A, get an F. We were actually language exercise programs. Yeah. We were gamified. We were playing. It was not classrooms that were like a regular classroom or here's the book. Boom, boom, boom. Learn. Yeah. So we really weren't what they were saying because we were like the after school fun program that the kids looked forward to coming yeah. home and playing a hundred percent they came with the their best. their no. costumes their <laughs> tiaras their princess dress their stuffed animals the dog the cat mom dad grandpa yeah but that's the key right is making it especially for young, the younger students it should just be play you're yeah. playing it's fun it's still learning but it's it's that's what really draws students in. They don't want to sit there, especially online. Okay, do this question, do this question, do this question. That's the least disengagement and, and lack of motivation. That's German. That's what the German word kindergarten means. It means a play garden. And I've mm -hmm. taken Montessori learning and we all believe in that. Even if I'm online, you better believe we're doing brain breaks. I got up and did exercise this morning. I'm like thanking the kids because if it wasn't for them, I would not move. Oh. <laughs> so now we get up and we're like, to the left, freeze. So now they're giving, actually, they're incorporating me moving more now. <laughs> <laughs> but it is so good just to get out there and play. And that's how they yeah. learn, you know, and it's just, it's important for them. And like, for the majority of my students, I could tell they looked forward to this as like a fun class. You know, there were some students who weren't into it, but especially my little ones, like they were excited and, you know, it wasn't just another boring thing they had to do. So exactly. exactly. And it was the time for them to actually, what we would say, like, let, like, let loose, yeah. let their guard down. And I, I and the grandparents were so cute sitting in the back. And we know mom and dad are right beside them, even if they don't, they're not on screen. We know yeah. they're right to the right. I had a little girl. I never once saw her mother, but I knew she was right next to her because oh, she yeah. always would be looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, and how is the weather over there in Mexico? Oh, it's gorgeous. Let me see if I can get you a peek oh. out my window. I don't know oh. if you can see. It's like yeah, the villa. I saw the, the villa. villa. I saw it. It's <laughs> oh my gosh. We it's, had our, we had our first you snowfall. have snow yet in Canada? We had our first snowfall this week. We have Ooh. sun, but, but it's cold <laughs> out here. I, I'm on the Danube. I could show you the window, but you can't see the river. Oh. So I can look at the Danube. I, I have like the Danube River right in front wow, of me. Wow, very cool. We're going back to St. Louis. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. And okay. so we're going back at the end of December. So we're going to spend three weeks back in the United States the to celebrate life. the holidays. Yeah. <laughs> you got to go out and come back. And are you going back to Mexico again? Yeah, we're going to come back here. So we rented our house here for a year. So we, we started out with the idea that we were going to just travel around a lot. And then like our little ones, you could tell they were craving some stability. They're kind of like, they weren't happy with moving. They needed some friends. And so we're like, okay, here's our new plan. We're going to have a home base in Mexico in Playa del Carmen because we love it here. It's amazing. 
And then we can travel from there for like maybe a week or two and then come back to our home, you know? And like, so now they have friends in the neighborhood. They just love our home and running around. It's really great. We are so happy nice. here. I've seen the yeah. pictures. It looks like a, I, I used to have a big house. It's so much fun because all the kids can come and play. Yeah. And they're probably learning Spanish just like English because little oh kids gosh. learn so fast. They are. And it's secretive. Like, <laughs> like I'll yeah. not even realize it. And then all of a sudden, uh, they'll be out playing with their friends in the park area. And I'll hear my own kids like speaking full Spanish sentences. And I'm like, I didn't even know you knew that. <laughs> <laughs> and my little one who's four, she has picked up this amazing Spanish accent that like I couldn't even reproduce if I tried that like just from playing with her native speaking friends, she's picked up and like my older one can speak really well too. She's seven, but the little one, like she has this special accent that's so just like the other kids in the neighborhood. And I'm like, Oh my God. Like I'm really seeing this language learning in action here with my own kids and how like it's exciting. And when they're little, yeah. like they just, man, pick it up so fast. Absolutely. That, that's what made me want to travel to a foreign country. Um, I was married to a foreigner and they were trilingual and I was so impressed by that. And so I made my son <laughs> go to a school and learn three languages. And then when he came back to America, we lived there for a couple of years and I made him learn French and Italian as well. <laughs> so the poor kid got, he got schooled in five languages. Wow. Does he remember them? No, but can he have a conversation in French? Yes. Can he have a conversation in Arabic? Yes. Can he have conversations in English? Yes. Spanish? He, he could probably get a couple <laughs> words. Italian, a couple yeah. of words. I, I can do better. I think it's Spanish and Italian than him, but. But think about all the I pathways in his brain that got developed learning all those new languages. Like that's he just so us. fascinating. He absolutely hated us. He said, I don't <laughs> want to learn French. I don't want to learn that. You're going to school. And you're going to French class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it opens so much more global opportunity. If you have that opportunity to learn all those languages, it's it's wonderful. Yeah, it did. You know what opportunity what? he did? He, he mm -hmm. met two girls from Paris. Hey. <laughs> exactly. And he was like this. And his friends were like, can we be the wingman? And they're like, no. he's like, no. And the girls were like talking and he could communicate. So I knew some kind of French must have went in his head. <laughs> because he did communicate with those girls for the summer. And I was just laughing. They were foreign exchange and they were constantly right next to my son. And his friends were like, let us be the wingmen. Please, please. <laughs> See, it was like, so useful. No. See, and he was mad. Yeah, you just like, told you so. You know? Right. <laughs> Knew you Came were in handy that. somehow. You know, I, I would have rather you work for like the State Department or like with the embassies. <laughs> but, but you hey, met two foreign exchange students. You know, it's <laughs> right. almost the same thing. <laughs> exactly. It was the funniest thing, though, as a teenager. I go out and I watch the girls and they're like sitting with them side by one on each side and all his friends were dying. They were just Aww. like, please let us talk to them. So, well, <laughs> French education came in handy. Yeah, totally. <laughs> A lot of my university students, they say they want to learn English to meet boys. Like the girls are like, they love talking about love and romance and like they want to meet boys. And like they are, most of my students are not shy at all about asking me questions. They'll be like, teacher Michelle, I have a question about Mexico. And I'm like, yeah, of course. Tell me, are there cute boys there? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> but can you take pictures? And I was like, oh. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know if my husband would like that very much. Excuse me. Stand still. <laughs> I I'm like, yeah, my husband might think that's a little odd if I start taking pictures of all the attractive men I see. But <laughs> dating site. <laughs> the next one. <laughs> yeah, it's just so funny. Oh, Michelle, sorry. thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun. Yes, I really enjoyed talking with you guys. I don't really see any questions. I've been kind of watching the chat. Yeah, um, I saw LaVon. LaVon was there. Yeah, LaVon. <laughs> hey, LaVon. She's one of our curriculum. She's one of our new curriculum creators. We just added her to the group. So, 
Yeah. We just added a couple new writers in. So we're going to be getting more lessons put out, which is awesome. So do you need editors? I could probably edit. I don't think I could go oh, through all the other we stuff. Do need <laughs> we just, well, we just added an editor for each level. So editing, the editing, we've been like trying to figure things out as we go. And we determined having an editor for each level was the best. Much better. Yeah. So right now we've got curriculum for levels one through six. So we've got levels one through six editors. We are going to have a level seven, but we don't have any um, any curriculum for it yet. We're still figuring out how we want to do level seven. Well, so. if you need, a, need an editor, it's like not, not like I have enough on my plate, but it would be a lot of fun. I know. I'm going to just tell you no, Brenda. <laughs> You've got enough going on. Don't take on another thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> This is what happens when your kids grow up and you're left home. This is like, this is called the empty nest. We're making sure it stays really full. My yeah. son's 26. He's living his life now in Fort Aww. Myers. Wow. Oh, my son is going to be 21 next week. So on the 23rd, oh, he? is he he's in you? the United States. So he has Good a job. job. Yeah, <laughs> he has a job in California. Um, he's in St. Louis right now. Um, they have like an off season. So he goes like to back to St. Louis. So he has a different job in St. Louis now. But yeah, this is our first birthday. We haven't been together. Wow. And like we were trying to make plans like one of us. 21? 21. 21. I'd take him to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So he wants to go skydiving. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's what he wants to do. He doesn't want to have like he's you know he's already kind of been through like partying and stuff, and so like, he doesn't have... he's not really interested in like going out to bars and doing that kind of thing for his twenty first. So he wants to go skydiving. So my mom and my sisters and my dad are all going to take him skydiving, and I'm they also, going, um, they're all going skydiving. No. Okay, no, 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 no. My son, maybe watching. my yeah, they're, they're watching. watching, and I told him they have to like FaceTime me the whole time. Yeah. Maybe my younger sister is like super adventurous. She's like, how old is she now? Oh my gosh, I'm gonna forget. She's thirty, and so thirty two. Sorry, Megan, if you're watching this, I forgot how old you are. Um, but she might go with him. She's trying to decide. Uh, but I'm like, you have to go with him. He needs supervision. <laughs> like, skydiving is yeah. amazing. Have Have you skydived before? My husband has, but I never have. It's so fun. Wow. Yeah. I've done. I did Paris uh, paragliding. I want to do skydiving, but I have bad knees and I dislocated my knee a year after. Oof. So I, I'm just afraid to do it, Yeah. but I can still remember. I took my, um, my stepson, my husband's son on an adventure and every day paintball guns, safari sky, the, the paragliding. And his mother is like, whose idea was that? <laughs> Hi. Yeah. I, she knew Hi, I'm me. Brenda. So she, <laughs> called, she, she called, he called her like right before the event. And he's just like, hi, mom, how are you? He didn't want her to worry. So he didn't want to scare her. Hi, yeah. mom, how are you? Yeah, okay, I love you, bye. And then he, he did it first and then I jumped out after him. And they wow. dragged me. The first the first pull, it was like, it dragged. I couldn't go backwards, running backwards. And they're like, are you okay? I'm like, can we do that again? That was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are so adventurous. I love it. <laughs> Michael, how was skydiving? I really want to do it, but I'm it was afraid. A with last, my it was so fun, so terrifying. Um, I don't remember the first couple seconds after leaving the plane. <laughs> <laughs> you blacked out. Well, honestly, it's a blank. But on the descent, uh, things were great. Um, when I when the cord. Poles. I was so scared of like, cause you hear about, Oh, dislocated shoulders from when you pull the cord and it mm. opens does not happen. It's so gentle. It's a gentle opening. And then wow. you float on down. Gentle landing. Was it a gentle landing? It was. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Very gentle landing. And then I was like, I want steak. <laughs> I want steak. I deserve this. <laughs> All that adrenaline, like. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was it was a blast. Like, um, yeah, I, I was going tandem with some with uh with an instructor, and of course, uh, it's the only way to go. I'm not going to jump on my own. Like, you go solo on your first one. They need to tandem first, and so uh, yeah, but it was a blast and so beautiful and just incredible. But the first two seconds out of the plane, I have no recollection because you're free falling. You probably you probably. Blacked out. They, Blacked they tell out. You yeah, when the... I got when I woke up again, I'm like, woohoo! My face is like pulled back, like yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> the video like, yanked <laughs> back to here. I got the thumbs out, and yeah, it was it was a good time. Awesome. Wow, that is amazing! How fun! I remember he tried to scare me when we were skydiving. I was dressed in black, and I'm like, hey, look, we go down. I'm ready. 
And he's like trying to go up and down, up and down. I'm like, oh, look at the birds. It was like sitting on a swing. It was so oh, yeah. peaceful. It was. <laughs> Same with parasailing as well. Parasailing is has that peaceful element as well when you're not you when know. you're above jellyfish. I was well, above no. a bunch of jellyfish. <laughs> oh, my God. God. In California where there's sharks. So <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. He's like, look at the big shark. Please don't fall. <laughs> well, well, yeah, it's funny because I, I was holding on to the to, to the cords and my partner's like, la la la, just like relaxing. It's like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to drop. <laughs> I just want to take in the ocean and the sights. Don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> don't touch me. <laughs> Gosh, um, we love it. Well, look, you've got we're in the adventure group, so it's good to discuss the adventure. Absolutely. I know, right? And that's that's how I came up with the name because I have a blog called Adventure Abroad, and like it's family adventure abroad because we're going on family adventures. And then when I was trying to come up with a name for my own private business, I was like, Well, I'll just call it Adventure Abroad. And then for the Facebook group, I was like, Let's just be consistent. We'll just call it Adventure Abroad English, private yeah. teaching tips. So that's where the whole Adventure Abroad name came from. It's amazing. I had everything is like different names. I've gone through the, like the growth and the businesses and changed. And it is amazing because each one was a different one. And I was just like, okay, we started with Oweta. Nobody knows what Oweta is. Then I went out to the really long name online, eslteachertraining.com. And I'm like, no, nah, that's not going to work. And then I found the acronym VLA, which means virtual learning educators. And I was like, perfect. Virtual learning educators rock. Done. Because it went from like really long. What you're all about. Yeah, it, it's just <laughs> exactly. Part of what you're all about, I should say. Yeah. Not the whole package. So I was going to say, are there some links I could put in the, the chat? I see. Sure. I put the, I put yes. my, um, I, uh, I did add in the chat. Oh no, I did it privately. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So VLE rock. Cause we have the events listed right there too. And yeah. then Michael's website as well. Yeah. So I Just think coach for the way StreamYard works, I'm going to have to post this after. Okay. I think so. I'm going to put them in notes in my. Uh... Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And I can put them in the comments too, if you want. Yeah. Put awesome. Yeah, yeah, once you post, yeah. Once you post, we'll put it in the comments as well. And uh, would you like us to put a special, any special promos if we have them as well? Ooh, yes. That would be amazing. Fiber Monday. Yeah. Oh, I know the teachers would love that for sure. Okay. So we'll put a special promo code in today. That sounds great. Yes. Amazing. Awesome. Thanks, Michelle. Yes. I know we've been talking for about an hour now, so I will let Poor you guys people. go. Sorry. It no, so it's all right. I know how lives work and people tune in when they can and then they pop out and, you know, like that's how I do it, you know, so. If I'm watching yeah. a live, you know, then maybe I'll. Go but I love it. It's like back. a talk show. It and, is. And I, I feel like I a talk love, show host. <laughs> I love doing the lives, and I've tried so hard, like with Michael and I. Remember, we were trying to do it on a table. Yeah. Zoom oh, yeah, has yeah. a table, but when we went to post live, he disappeared. Oh no, no no no! I didn't disappear. I was miniature. I was this little tiny thing on a seat. In no the no! But when we when we went into Facebook Live. Oh yeah, yeah. Your whole picture disappeared. I'm like, oh, oh no. I was I was a ghost, Michelle, and it was okay. I it was I was like, wait a ghost. second, I see me, but I don't see you. So <laughs> I was just like, oh because <laughs> you can create the rooms behind you. I thought that was like really cool, but like well, how do yeah. you know I didn't just leave temporarily and come back just to mess with you? Did you play hide? Did you play hide and seek on me? I That's did not what you hide and seek on you. <laughs> I know. I yeah. Well, I enjoyed it as well, Michelle. And Thank you, Michelle. Uh, do do yes. we get do we get copies? Because I'd love to put these. Is there do you do you tape these? I don't even know if we tape these. So anymore. if I upgrade, I think I can record this, but I don't think this is recorded. But it'll I can, it'll post I can, in the group. I can also I can upgrade for you. I can like I can screenshot it for you. Oh, awesome! I get I got Castify, and then I can send it to you as an MP4. Awesome! I would love that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I pay for those upgrades. So 
I know. I told myself, I'm like, I guess I'm a business person now, so I should probably start paying for upgrades. Like, I was trying to host a meeting on Zoom, and it kept, like, going out every 40 minutes. And I was like, oh, I guess I should upgrade to, like, the real Zoom now because I just hate paying for stuff. Well, you're smart. I, I'm just the opposite. And I, I tracked it on a thing and said, oh, my God, what have I done? 90% <laughs> of this stuff I don't even use. You know, I have, I have read reading Apple education.com starfall. I think I use starfall once I, I was, I just go in and I'm like, Oh, ABC mouse. Oh, it's a good deal. Shh. They know sale. They know how to, they know how to attract us. To yeah, buy. I know. <laughs> yeah. I guess at some point I'll upgrade some of, some of my things. We'll see <laughs> if I can't find another way to do it for free, then I guess I'll upgrade. <laughs> Definitely. Sure. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. And I will see you all again at the virtual book fair, which I'm super excited about. Yeah. Can yeah, we got your ticket on the side? Don't worry. We're going to let oh. you in that room. Oh, which time did you want to come? 9 30, 10 30, or 11 30? Just let me know. Yeah, I'll let you know. That way we'll get you. Um, actually, I can let you in the Zoom room with us. Yeah, I've got them all on my calendar. <laughs> I just started adding them all because I was like, I don't know which one I'm coming to. So they're all on there. <laughs> yeah, and we actually have three dates as well. So if you can't make it on the 26th, we have the December 3rd and we're going to go on December 10th as well. We're Very keeping busy. Cool. I love that you guys put this together and I think the teachers are going to love it. It's so exciting. Well, thank you Very so much. Cool. Thank you. And have a wonderful, wonderful morning, afternoon. Yeah. I know, right? Okay, tell what me, Cher, what me? time is it? For yeah. me, it's 9.45 a.m. Ditto. Yeah. Ditto? Okay, we're on the same time, Michael. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 4.45 p.m. Wow. Have a great <laughs> evening then, Brenda. Yes, yes, have a good evening, Brenda. I, <laughs> I will. Have a great day. Bye. All right, bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye.